This is 113 on your FM dial at 7.30. Rachel, David, breakfast. Barney, get the kids up for breakfast. Two banks on Wall Street were destroyed by explosions in the early hours of the morning. A new garbage strike looms on the horizon. Wonderful. And street gangs here have claimed the lives of two additional victims. Three Japanese terrorists have hijacked an Italian airliner. And in retaliation, three Italian terrorists have blown up a Japanese restaurant. <laughs> Come on, everybody. Up, please. Up for breakfast. What's the uh, weather look like outside? It's brown today. Is it raining? Something's coming down, but I don't think it's water. What is it? It's a new plague. Isn't it pretty? A little brown rain is normal for New York at this time of year. If it gets a little colder, we can look forward to a tan Christmas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think you should go to work today. Uh, a little brown in the air never bothered me yet. I think you should resign from the police force today. I think you should go to Montana and buy a chicken farm today. I don't like chickens. You don't know chickens. You've only seen them frozen with pimples <laughs> and wrapped in plastic. You've never seen them cute and lively with their fur on. Fur? You'll be crazy about Montana. You really hated Amaka? Yes. Don't beat around the bush. Are you aware of the fact that somebody tried to break in here last night? How do you know? Because there's a clean spot on the window. <laughs> they must not have wanted to get in very badly. If they really wanted to break in, the bars on that window wouldn't have stopped them. Then what did we put them up for? Don't you remember? I made a promise when we got married. I said I would do everything I could to make you happy. You wanted bars? I gave you bars. I'm very grateful. I love my bars. <laughs> Are you aware that statistics show that there is more crime in the streets than in the home? There's more room in the streets. <laughs> now an item from the world of entertainment. Three people were slain in a the theater last night during a first half of intermission robbery attempt. Now once again, your musical interlude. This is 113 on your FM dial on the 101st floor of the Empire State Building. Have a good day. Yeah, yeah, up here where nobody can get to you. <laughs> Occasion. We're celebrating the printing of Stanley's first business cards. Oh. What do you think? Stanley M. Mankiewicz, attorney at law, public defender's office. Raised letters. <laughs> Come on, baby. Oh, yeah, we're gonna be late. Hurry up, hurry up. Give me a kiss. All right, see ya. Have bye a good day. day. Have a good day. Bye bye, baby. Bye. Take a crowded bus. <laughs> you all right? I have a something's rotten in Denmark feeling. Would you consider not going to work today and taking me for a drive in the country? As you heard the radio, shootings, bombings. It's my busy season. <laughs> you really love it, don't you? You say shootings and bombings, your eyes light up. Would it make you happier if I didn't like my work? It would make me happy if you liked me better. I don't think you like me better. That is ridiculous. You remember the day you got your gold badge, how excited you were? Do you know what that means to a wife, to know that her husband is more excited about his badge than her body? That's nonsense. I was every bit as excited by your body as my badge. More, probably. Sometimes your sense of humor really annoys me. Goodbye. I have criminals waiting. I'll take you to the country this weekend. No, today, please. Humor me. 
I've humored you. When? That night on the other side of the George Washington Bridge, in the back seat of the Studebaker. You promised you would never throw that up to me. Don't be silly. I throw it up to you every chance I can get. I know. I just thought this was another good opportunity. Liz, I've had a wonderful time, but I really have to go. That's what you said that night in the Studebaker. <laughs> Precinct, Detective First Grade Harris. Uh, yes, ma'am. A man peeping on your fire escape? What's the address, ma'am? Uh huh. Third floor rear bedroom window? Uh, what's he look like, ma'am? Tall, 180 pounds, dark hair, nicely dressed, cute smile. Uh, yes, ma'am. Call back if you need us. <laughs> Have a good day. Get inside, Harry. If you can't afford an attorney, the court will provide one at no expense to yourself. You understand? Yeah, I understand. Come on, won't you, Howitz? Give me a break. Sure. What do you want broken? <laughs> Bookmaking, possession of gambling records. Wait a minute. I want an attorney at no cost to myself. What for? You're guilty. You mind if I don't take your word? Yeah, bankroll and betting slips, Harry. You got caught with all this stuff on you. Names, figures, 125, collect Paluzzi, 350, pay Schaefer. You're getting careless, Harry. 65, collect Yamana. 12 precincts, Sergeant Yamana. You're getting very careless, Harry. Hey, you guys are making a big mistake. You were sitting on top of the man, beating him with a brick. He's self-defense, man. He hit me first. I was just, you know... Mugging him. Right on. I said, hey, man, give me your money. You know, and the next thing I know, he hits me. That guy, he must be from out of town or something. You type, I got a headache. I got to go to the can, you know? You're embarrassing, you know that? Sin vergüenza de la tala chubo cocho nauca. Eh, Puerto Rican, man. I didn't know you Puerto Rican. Because you're so embarrassing. You know what I feel like when I hear somebody screaming, help, police, murder, call the cops, somebody's getting killed. And I find a Puerto Rican beating the hell out of some whitey. I gotta pull out my piece and say, hold on, my hands in the air, police officer, thank you, because I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> Everybody's out there mugging Whitey, even Whitey. You're no Whitey. You're not even black. I beg your pardon? <laughs> Just trying to make a point. <laughs> what do you need it for, huh? So you get yourself into trouble, you got no big militant organizations, you got no connections, you got no money, and you can't even run, man. <laughs> don't you have any aspirin? I never use it, don't need it. Maybe you don't eat the right things. <laughs> Clean mind and a healthy body. Uh, hey, anybody want more advice tomorrow? For me, I'll take it. <laughs> you were advice last week. I'm a policeman, baby. I goes where I'm needed. <laughs> you taking aspirin again? Yeah. What for? My headache. You know, I know what your trouble is. What? It's your age. What can I do about it? Um, nothing. Then what did you bring it up for? Just make a friendly conversation. Come on, Harry, I want to talk to you downtown. Hey, Yamada, ain't there something you can do for me? No, uh, just 20. I'll pay you the rest when you get out. Hey, he won't let me go to the can. Yeah, trying to take him to the bathroom. You take him there. Your cuffs. Oh, yeah, come on. I'm in bad shape. Me too. I need a fix. I need a vacation. <laughs> just, just a hey, Harris. Last week when you was working vice, were you disguised as a rabbi? 
Yeah, why? Did you have to forcibly subdue a guy in a delicatessen? Yeah. It's for you. It's the Benet brief. <laughs> Now I'm really embarrassed. Try to stop me, I'm gonna get out of here. I kill anybody who tries to stop me. Get, get, get out of my way, I swear I'm gonna kill everybody in this damn place if I don't get out of here. Boy, do I hate to start a day like this. <laughs> get out of my way, move! I'm moving, I'm moving. But I'm moving very slowly. I said, I want you to misinterpret my moves. I want to get out of here. I don't blame you. I don't want to hurt anybody. Of course you don't want to hurt anybody. But I want to get out of here. Sure you'll get out of here. <laughs> Not with a gun. Can I get out of here without the gun? <laughs> we'll try to arrange something. <laughs> Let me ask don't you. Don't come up closer. Of course not. I'm backing up. What, do you think I'm crazy? <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Go ahead. What's your name? That's the question? Yeah. I'm Barney Miller. Don't call me, man! No, 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 no con, no con, no con. It's just that if you call somebody by a name, he becomes a person. It's easy to shoot a stranger, it's hard to shoot a person. What's your name? Santos. Santos. There, yeah, see, we're... We're getting to know each other already. Maybe we can even be friends, huh? What's your first name? Ramon. You call me Barney, I'll call you Ramon. I want to get out of here, Barney. <laughs> sure you get Ramon, but, but you got to go by the rules. First, we got to book you. In jail? That's all we got here. <laughs> but you get a fair and impartial trial. Oh, man. What's the matter? I'm a Puerto Rican junkie in a police station with a gun in my hand. What am I gonna do with a fair child? <laughs> Ramon, this is a police station. <laughs> Gotta let Sergeant Amangual answer the telephone. Believe me, he won't do anything stupid. <laughs> Don't do anything stupid, Sergeant Amangual. <laughs> okay. Fort Precinct Detective, Sergeant Mangual speaking. <laughs> Barney is your wife. <laughs> Ask her to call back, will you? Could you call back later, Elizabeth? <laughs> she can't call back, Barney. <laughs> Ramon, are you, are you married? Someday you'll be married, you'll understand. Do you, do you mind if I speak to my wife? No tricks. No tricks. Uh, be brief, will you, Liz? I'm kind of busy. Liz. Li li Liz. Liz, I can't talk chickens now. I got people waiting. Li yeah, all right. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll remember you to all the boys. <laughs> okay, bye-bye, <laughs> dear. Bye-bye. <laughs> Forgive me, Ramon. Hey, I got a great idea. Wonderful. I'll take thinking to shooting any day. <laughs> Everybody pay attention. Ramon has an idea. Okay, man, look. I'll give you back the gun, and then you let me walk out of here, and we can forget the whole thing happened, huh? <laughs> what do you say, huh? You know, that's not such a bad idea. I'd like to, Ramon, but I can't. Why not? It's OK with us. Absolutely. <laughs> no. Why not? It's OK with them. Ramon, if I told you that if you gave me the gun, I would let you walk out of here like nothing happened, would you believe me? Maybe. No, you wouldn't, because you're not stupid. But neither are we. If you give me that gun and try to walk out of here, Sergeant Amangual and the rest of the boys are going to beat the hell out of you. Tell them. <laughs> Tell him what? Tell him if he gives me the gun and tries to walk out of here, you and the rest of the boys are going to beat the hell out of him. Barney! Tell him! <laughs> I want Ramon to know that up here, 
Nobody lies to him. Okay, if you put the gun down and try to walk out of here, me and the boys are gonna beat the hell out of you. <laughs> Now, that you can believe. Now, Ramon, that gun is not going to get you out of here. But I've got something in my pocket that will. What you got? A card. What kind of card? A card with the name of a lawyer on it. I ain't got no dough for a lawyer. Stanley Mankiewicz doesn't charge. Don't put me on, man. Everybody charges this. That's the beauty part of this card. The city pays him. He's a public defender. He's, he's very young, but he's very bright. Keeps company with my daughter. This guy Mankiewicz, he's not a Puerto Rican. He's Jewish. It's practically the same thing. <laughs> now, Ramon. Ramon, you see, my gun is over here and my hands are up here. Now, the card is in this pocket. Here. I don't know, man. Here, here. Put it right there. Cops are going to be coming through that door. It's going to be all over now. Pick up the car. You want me to kill you, man? I want you to call Stanley Mankiewicz. <laughs> Is that too much to ask of a friend? Okay, you won't regret it. Whose gun is this? <laughs> Mine. You and I will discuss it another time. Our Ramon happened to get your gun. Meanwhile, take him downstairs and book him. Let him make his phone call. And give him something for a screaming memes. Hey, the truth, I could use a little something myself. Hey, Barney, why didn't you just drop to the floor? I could have had a clear shot at him. I wouldn't want a thing like that on your conscience, would you, Howitz? Besides, I've seen you on the pistol range. <laughs> well, what's that mean? <laughs> well, with the kid, I stood a 50-50 chance he wouldn't shoot me. With you, I wasn't so sure. <laughs> Hello? Who's there? It's me, I'm home. I'll believe it when I see it. Daddy me. It's not polite to sneak up behind people and bang. David. David, there is two and a half million dollars worth of toys in this house. How come you always play with a gun? Play with a gun? It's part of my job. Mr. Schwartz has a job and he doesn't play with a gun. Mr. Schwartz is a janitor. He plays with a shovel. <laughs> Father's a police officer, he plays with a gun. Here, look. Come play with this. David, your pizza's ready. Hi. Hi. How was your day? We didn't get robbed. Oh, see? See, that's because I washed the rest of the window and they couldn't find their way back. Oh. Oh. <laughs> How was your day? Fine. Really? Yeah. Perfectly normal day. I don't believe you, but I never look a gift husband in the mouth. Hi, Pop. Uh, oh, Mom, can I have somebody to eat right away? I thought you were going out for dinner with Stanley. Our public defenders don't have any money. All we ever eat for dinner is dessert. <laughs> oh, uh, I'll get it. I'll fix something for Stanley, too. That way you can both start out even. <laughs> and how was school today? I didn't get robbed. Rachel. Hi. Oh, hello, Stanley. Can I fix a drink? Ah, uh, no, thank you, Captain Miller. Good evening, Mrs. Miller. Hi, Stanley. Actually, uh, I'm here tonight for two reasons. First, to take a certain young, beautiful girl out to dinner. And second, to present a bottle of wine to the hero as a, a tribute and a thank you. Hero? What hero? 
You shouldn't have done it, Stanley. What hero, Stanley? Didn't he tell you? No. Well, this morning, uh, some crazy kid strung out on drugs comes into the police station and takes a gun away from one of the police officers and threatens to kill everyone in the place unless they let him go free. And Captain Barney Miller not only talks him out of it, but refers him to me as a client. <laughs> well, isn't that swell, Stanley? How did a thing like that happen? It happens all the time on a perfectly normal day. What is everybody making a big deal big about? Big deal? Dad, you could have been killed. Stanley's over-dramatizing everything. He comes up with this wild story about some crazy kid comes into the police station, steals a policeman's gun, threatens to shoot everybody in the place unless we let him out. Wasn't that what happened? Well, of course not. Then what happened? Some crazy kid came into the police station, stole a policeman's gun, threatened to shoot everybody in the place unless we let him go. <laughs> What the hell? A miss is as good as a mile, I always say. I'm sorry, Captain Miller. I didn't mean to upset everybody. It's all right, Stanley. We've been there before. Is there anything I can do? Yes, you came to take my daughter to, to dessert. Take her. <laughs> See you later. A perfectly normal day. I didn't want to upset you. You could have broken it to me gently. Like, guess who almost got killed today? <laughs> a situation like this happens once in a lifetime. You realize what that means? I'm safe for the rest of my lifetime. Sometimes your sense of humor... Yeah, I know, it annoys you. Yes. I knew you weren't going to Montana today. I had a feeling you sensed that. I knew you weren't going to buy a chicken farm today. Very observed. I always know when you're hiding something from me. Liz. Liz. I know a guy who wants to sell a Studebaker. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> Bang! <laughs> Look, don't jab me, man. You followed me six blocks and offered me a hundred bucks. <laughs> that is, you out of towners that give New York a bad name, man. Right up. And Ramon doesn't deny his guilt, but society is the real criminal here. Society has taken away his choices and therefore taken away his freedom. Excellent speech, Stanley. Excellent speech. Shut up. Yeah, uh, Ramon Santos has been released by the court. Check him out. You're kidding. How'd he manage that? No one appeared to press the charges. Yeah. But it would have been an excellent speech, Stanley. <laughs> Ramon, under most circumstances, we wouldn't approve, but we're glad to see you get a break. You. Santos, come here and sign up for your valuable. <laughs> what did the judge say about him taking Fisher's gun? Fisher's gun? Sergeant Fish, did someone take your gun away? My gun? Don't be ridiculous. Your mother, do you recall such an incident? What was this? What'd you hold? It's, was Ramon in here with a gun? Ah, uh, you were in the way. I couldn't get a good look at him. Harris? All Puerto Ricans look alike to me. <laughs> so long, Ramon. See you, Stanley. Hey, Mr. Monkowitz. Just don't worry about it, man. I bet you get another chance to make that speech. I got lots of friends. <laughs> That's embarrassing. You know that? <laughs> I mean, you are really embarrassing. It's embarrassing, isn't it? Oh, it is. <laughs> <laughs>